So here's your question. Many people use percents to show data. Mickey surveyed 100 grade 7 students in his city about their favorite type of movie. So yeah, comedy 32%, action 41%, horror 16%, and other 11%. Which graph is the most effective graph to represent this set of data and why? <laughs> We think that the circle graph like best represents this set of data. We thought that because like, it's really easy to tell which is the biggest and which is the smallest, and like you don't need to like write a scale or anything for it. So no scale, that's a benefit. Yeah. Okay. And and you can just like estimate like which one is the biggest. Okay. And so it's just, like, yeah. It doesn't take like time to draw anything. Even. Okay. So because I see you did a bar graph, because the bar graph you can tell that action is the most okay so you say a circle graph does anyone else have another way to represent this can you tell us why a circle graph is uh it's because it shows the since it's out of a hundred people uh, -huh. uh we can uh, say the exact amount of uh people that sh showed each one because for uh, for the bar graph you can see it's at 40, but you don't know which number exactly it's okay. in 40. Yeah, so you did, it, it eliminates some of the guesswork, yeah. right? Now, can you do a circle graph if less than 100 people or more than 100 people have been surveyed? Because in this case, it says 100 people were surveyed. But what if I said to you 300 people were surveyed or 12 people were surveyed? Is it possible to still do a circle graph with that. It's all here. Yeah. Why? Um, all you have to do is say, um, for the action, if it was a like six out of four, you would divide six by 12 and give 50% and that's how you can change. So then, why is the circle graph the most effective? What is the reason it gives us that, 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 that power of Effectiveness that we so much love, Malia. Yeah. So you're saying circle graphs are ideal for percentages. So if you're, if you have a set of data that is represented in percent, a circle graph is the way to go. Because had this said, you know, a bunch of students were surveyed, this graph right here the bar graph, you're, you have to guess, you know, what the numbers are here. And graphing percents is not usually something you will see. A pie graph or a circle graph is much easier to see, like, the percentages. Okay, I'm not saying that this one isn't easy, but this one's just more common in our, in our everyday lives. Okay, so now my next question is, you can have a seat, thank you. this group right here, I like how they colored it, I get to easily see the difference. How did, how were they able to determine how much to shade? How were they able to determine that this much is 41%? How is this 32%? 16 and 11. Those are those are not easy numbers to to put in a circle graph. For the forty for the action it's closer to the fifty percent point, so all you have to do is reduce it a little bit. Okay, so you're saying that because forty one is closest to fifty mm -hmm. that they probably just drew out a fifty percent yeah. circle and just kinda shaved off a few um you know a few points here yeah. okay is there another number here that lends itself easily to trying to predict how much of the circle graph will be taken up almost immediately I think maybe one-third which is like equal to 33 percent and it's like uh, the same uh, almost 41 percent so maybe if they split into uh, groups of the three so there's three parts. Mm -hmm. They can uh, just see that if one part's 33%, they just make it a little bit bigger and it'll uh, just become 41%. So you said they took the, th 
they split this into one third and they manipulated this number. Is there another number that's a little Easy. easier to, to play with rather than the 41 if you're working with thirds, Ali? Um, 32%. Well, 32% right here. You see that? 32% is one off. 41% is nine off from 50. So if you know what a third looks like, and it is one of the introductory fractions we ever learned, if you made your circle graph, okay, maybe do this in pencil, so you don't, um, so you can erase it. So a third looks about like this. Okay, that's about a third. So it's safe to put here, you know, 32%. And then you can erase this. And then the other one you said was a half, right? The other easy fraction. So if you extend this line here, is this not here 50%? Isn't that 50%? Well, we know it's not 50%. The data is 41. Perhaps, you know, maybe go up like this a bit and you get your 41 percent and then splitting the last two well that's that's a little tricky 16 and 11 you know the 16 has to be slightly bigger so you're looking at something like this that's actually almost even let's go this way it's not so I'm sure you guys can make it look better Tim? Can we use the like, percent as, as like one hand and not that just add a little bit more? You can definitely use one tenth. I only used one third because one third is a benchmark fraction for me. So another benchmark fraction that was just mentioned right now is we said a half. Right? A half is easy. Another one is a quarter, okay? If you looked at this here, what's the percent on each side? What percentage, Wajid? It's 50, okay? And then what percent is represented in a quarter? Miriam? 25, okay? And then in the thirds, it's 33. We just said that. Okay. So that's what's being represented right now. And then the last thing I'm going to ask you is what connections can you make with this fraction right here with other mathematical concepts that we've been doing? There's 25% in each section here. We know it's a quarter. We know it's a quarter. We know it's 25%. And everything that 25% brings to the table, that includes 0 0.25, 25 over 100. Sarah? Um, it's also for angles, like 25 is like the right angle. Right. If, if you look here, like Sarah just said, this is a right angle here. They're each 90 degrees. This is a Cartesian plane. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, 3, and 4. Over here, this 50%, it's a half. It's also 180 degrees, because there's the angle right there. And for this one here, it's a third. It's 33%, about 33%. How many degrees are in a circle, Syrah? Um, so 360, when we divide 360 by 3, we get 120. Okay, so these are all benchmarks. Our next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use algebra, or you're going to discover how to use algebra to figure out exactly how many degrees you need to get this angle, how many degrees you need to get this angle in here in order to find the right percents.